Oh, this was interesting. Um, congratulations, anyone in New York City. I don't know if anyone is this actually is it's New York State, I believe. Uh, and oh, and New, New Jersey. Well, apparently Japan is a consulate. Uh, it's understandable given the number of Japanese who live in New York and New Jersey. The Japanese consulate apparently uh, sent an email to Japanese residents uh, of these states which are going through um, uh, legalization of recreational use of uh, marijuana and uh yeah they're actually and not only are they legalizing uh recreational use i'm not exactly sure the the details of the legalization there and you know the specifics but apparently at least recreational use you will no longer be there's no longer you know criminal offense and in fact anyone who has been convicted for possession of small amounts of marijuana is actually going to have their records expunged so you know uh, new york is actually uh, it's more or less an end to prohibition like with alcohol However, uh, we've talked before about, um, you know, um, be really careful, uh, particularly coming from a place with liberalized laws in this regard, um, that, you know, Japan is so far, uh, I would say, behind this. Remember as well, Japan's regulation of marijuana, it didn't regulate marijuana until GHQ came in here. And the story of Japan's regulation of marijuana, marijuana is a domestic plant, at least hemp is a domestic plant in Japan. It's actually associated with a lot of Shinto religious uh, ceremonies and stuff and whatnot. And um, it, it, it was actually, and not only that, the, the emperor was the uh, actual patron of the Japanese, uh, you know, Hemp Growers Association. And when GHQ came in after World War II, during World War II, a lot of the planes and clothes and ropes were actually made. You know, Japan didn't have a lot of cotton handy and they didn't have synthetics because there were petroleum, you know, embargoes on Japan. Th- those airplanes and ships and everything and clothes were all made from hemp. They were made from huge hemp farms that, that covered the whole country. And America under, you know, GHQ was keen to sell American synthetic products to Japan, including rayon and nylon and so on. And it was partly because of that, that they effectively uh, outlawed the hemp farms. And, you know, they did this as part of a law criminalizing marijuana in Japan, you know, criminalizing hemp in all forms of it, including marijuana. Uh, before it was illegal in America, uh, the Americans made it illegal here in Japan. And the law was so strict and the emperor actually toured the country promising hemp growers that uh, he was going to protect them and make sure that they would they would be you know shielded from the bad effects of the law but but the industry got wiped out um, that said you can still drive around in Hokkaido it grows by the highway you know it grows wild in Japan the stuff by the way is hemp it's not strong you know there's not skunk growing around everywhere but you know Niigata there and Hokkaido there are still big hemp farms and and there are wild varieties of it in Japan so it's kind of funny it was actually not it, there's no traditional history in Japan of demonizing in fact if anything it's kind of like an elevated sort of sacred plant in Japan not for smoking but for other sort of purposes although including use in Shinto ceremonies and it was outlawed by the Americans in Japan but that law like a lot of things that Japan has imported was adopted with the fervor that basically even today you know marijuana is seen in, in japan as literally crack cocaine literally like that one of the most demonized sort of drugs and, and, and presumed hard drug and not not for the harmful effects of it it's not there's no public policy assumption it's based it's more like a religious rule type thing that um you know taking it is simply breaking the rules in a bad way in a way that only a you know a devout criminal would ever break so the the stigma against um you know people who don't have the stigma and people use it in japan um but you know the 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 consequence the societal rejection of it and the 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 consequences criminally even for small amounts of possession you can suffer you can get serious jail time for it in japan as well as people you can go through some pretty bad stuff so you should never bring that stuff to japan However, um, it was an interesting challenge for America for the Japanese Foreign Ministry and the, the Ministry of Justice when uh, Washington State in Colorado first decriminalized marijuana in America. Ironically, the Americans decriminalizing when, when they're the ones who criminalized it in Japan. When they started decriminalizing it, um, the, the moral panic in Japan immediately became, what about our exchange students? What about our kids that were sent over to these states studying? You know, they might be... Um, it's the equivalent of, you know, um, having uh, Americans sending their kids to, you know, France to study in France, legalizing crack, I suppose, during the 1980s, uh, when there was like this huge hysteria about it. It was like, it would be something like that. So basically, the Japanese consulate was uh, publishing, sending emails to everybody in those cities, as they're doing right now to New Jersey, reminding Japanese citizens, and not just Japanese citizens, by the way, but even residents of Japan, like if you're a permanent resident of Japan, or a, a, a even a working visa person in Japan, technically under the Japanese criminal code, there's no geographical 
geographic restriction. If they find out that you have uh, used marijuana or possessed marijuana, even while in a different country where it was legal, um, this is what the, the email says, is that you can face um, criminal prosecution in Japan just the same as if you'd done it in Japan. So even if you think it's legal, don't go, don't get into the wacky tobacco. You are going to get into trouble here in Japan. This uh, We will hunt you down and uh, arrest you, you know, even if this, you know, e even if, you, if you're in a place where it's legal. They sent this out the moment that it was legalized in New Jersey and uh, New York. So going really hard after this. I mean, it's kind of crazy. You think about that, how many Japanese go to Macau for gambling, which is legal, illegal in Japan. But do you think that the Japanese consulate in Macau warns people that uh, if you guys gamble here, when you go back to Japan, we're going to arrest you? Um, you know, you think about the drinking age, which is actually very similar to this. And Japanese look at it a similar way. They, they look at the idea of, um, you know, in New Zealand, when they think of a, a bar selling alcohol to, a, you know, someone underage, they think that it's a problem where the bar is violating its license, whereas in Japan, they think of it as the 19-year-old um, who's underage breaking the law by drinking before they're legally allowed to do it. Um, and so they're, 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 they're criminals, you know. Uh, and, and yet there's the idea that they don't warn people in Germany, you know, that where you can legally drink, I think it's 16 or something like that, they, that, you know, they don't warn them like this. But when New York legalizes marijuana, they, they, they actually send threatening notes to uh, all the Japanese residents of New York saying, um, don't, don't you join this into prohibition still applies to you. Imagine like, you know, uh, Utah sending emails to, 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 missionaries around the world saying don't drink coffee just because you're in Brazil it's like that so it's kind of it's kind of crazy and um, it kind of I mean look to me it is ridiculous particularly now it doesn't work we have the federal government actually still treating uh, in America still treating marijuana completely inconsistently with how the states do and all the problem that that creates problems that that creates um, it's one of these things as well that while um, I've never, I'm, I'm okay with, with decriminalization uh, of it or legalization of it, but yeah, at the same time, I, I, I think that there's a, it's, and I, I, I accept the, the policy based that, that um, everything I understand about it in New Zealand, it, it's always been widespread before it was mostly decriminalized there. Um, yeah, the, 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 the rationale for criminalizing it when tobacco and alcohol is legal doesn't make sense, you know, so, it, it, but, but like alcohol and tobacco, doesn't mean it's all good you know like people can actually uh I, I don't think it's controversial to say that people can get kind of messed up on it if they overdo it or if they take too much of it and and particularly with the really strong varieties coming out so i don't you know i think some people go the opposite way where they want to argue that it's good and that you know when it's illegal when they're, they're arguing for the legalization they don't just say it's not that bad they actually say oh this is actually a good thing like we should be putting it in kids cereal um, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I think it's something you should still be responsible with, but I think it's not something that the government should have should regulate or treat like a hard drug, and that's that applies here too. But that said, in Japan, they don't care. <laughs> it's just illegal stuff. Don't do it. Follow the rules. And they're actually they're actually going as far as chasing down Japanese in America where it's legal and saying that we're going to get you. So so you know crazy stuff. So something to bear in mind. And who knows? I mean, this is again maybe maybe America leading the way will uh, force a change in Japan, but we'll see.